the Kimball method slowly changing dimension component. How do I use this thing? Now it's time to use the Kimball method slowly changing dimension component. In addition to using the source system, we're going to need an OLADB source command to pull in the existing dimension table so that we can do the comparison. It is possible to optimize this technique to only use changed rows from the source system and current rows from the dimension table. We're not going to do that this time, so we're just going to select the dimension table and all the columns in it. Now we'll go drag the Kimball SCD component out of the toolbox and attach the dimension table to the existing dimension input and the source system to the source system input. Using the editor, we're going to inform the component what each of the columns is for. We're going to identify a surrogate key, our SCD2 housekeeping columns, so we've got our effective and our expiry date. We're going to identify our business key columns, and then we're going to identify our purchasing information as SCD type 1s, and our computer name operating system and user as type 2s. The component automatically maps columns so that it can compare them from the dimension table to the source system, but you can override those mappings here. You can then configure the component as to how some comparisons will be made when it does business key lookups as well as attribute change determination, whether it ignores case or ignores leading spaces, which are the defaults. Next, we're going to instruct the component how to interpret and update type 2 housekeeping columns. First, we supply a date time variable with a load date. Then we identify how frequently we're going to load the dimension. We select how to manage the application of that effective and expiry date time. And we specify how the current record is determined. Since we're comparing this against the wizard, I'm going to select the null value, even though I do prefer using the default to make querying easier. By default, the component's set up to manage your surrogate keys for you, although we can turn that off and let the database engine handle that with identity values. We're not using inferred members. We can optimize the components some more to get rid of those column not used warnings. We have the ability to use some auditing features, which were not in this demo. The component also supplies some performance suggestions. And we're going to ignore them right now. And all that remain are warnings about outputs that are not connected. The component can be saved even if you haven't finished all your configuration and you won't lose any of the configuration you've set up to date. Now we need to handle various outputs of the components. So the first thing we're going to do is take advantage of the invalid input output, which will show us if we have any problems with the input data that we're giving the component. There may be invalid business keys, for example, with nulls. You should be doing a little bit more with this output in order to track any problems, perhaps persist it to a database table or something like that, so you can audit these things. For me, I'm just going to attach them and put a data viewer on there to trap any errors that come through. Now we can handle the outputs which represent the results of the component. So the first one we're going to handle are brand new rows coming out where we didn't find a business key match in the dimension table. This is straightforward. We just pick the new output, set up the OLADB destination to push it right into the dimension table, and all the columns should map. And the one thing we'll do is remove the mapping for the surrogate key, because in this case, we're letting the database handle generation of the surrogate key. Next, for those rows that had SCD1 changes to them, we're going to do an OLADB command and update those in the dimension table. We're going to do this the same way we did it with the Roll Your Own and the Wizard. We're going to put in an update statement. The only difference is that we're going to do the updates by surrogate key instead of by business key. And 
again, watch the tricky matching by making sure that you're doing the right data types in the right order of columns. Next task is to update the SCD2 records and the first part of that is expiring the old rows. So we're going to take the expired SCD2 output which already has set the date on it for us and we're going to push that straight into an OLADB command where we're going to issue an update on the database and just update the expiry date based on that surrogate key. One thing to note though is that we do have the possibility that the expired row could also have some SCD1 changes that need to be made to it so we have to do that update here as well. last part of hooking up the KSCD in this situation is to push the new SCD2 version rows into the database using an OLADB destination and all the columns should map properly and again we'll ignore that surrogate key column because we're going to let the database handle that. just one last warning that I want to remove on the component about not hooking up the deleted output. In this case, I know that my processing is never going to give me any deleted rows, so I'm going to go over to the output column selection to the output for deleted, and I'm going to ask it not to warn me. There are a bunch of ways that I could optimize this flow. One of them is I could take these two destinations and put a union all in front of them and push them both into the table that way. Sometimes you'll get better performance doing them separately just like I'm doing. It all depends on your situation. Let's execute this technique and see where the rows go. We'll see we get four rows in from the dimension table, three rows in from the source system, and on the outputs we don't have any new rows coming out the new one like we expect. We've got one row coming out the updated SCD1. One row is expired coming out the SCD2. And one row is coming out as the new version of the SCD2. When we run through the cleanup step, we'll see that we get the five rows that we expect. 1 through 5. We've got the dates that we expect to see. And as we scroll over to the right, we'll see that we've got Joe, John Doe corrected, and we've got the correct version of the operating system persisted into the database table. Hopefully that made sense. Try it out yourself by downloading and installing the component right from CodePlex.